podcast for your career and your life, no matter what business you're in. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Northern Power Women podcast. I'm Sam Walker. She is Simone Roche and we're here with you every single week to talk about work, career, networking, mentoring, life and pretty much everything else in between mustn't forget jigsaw Simone that's one of our key topics of course of conversation must and I'm still I'm still working my way through this crazy jigsaw not even following the picture because it's one of those crazy ones that's cryptic so I'm still working my way through that and and it's and it's February after all we're practically motoring through this year well I know and frankly the amount of jigsaw action you've had over the last 12 months of lockdown if they do not introduce extreme jigsawing as an Olympic sport (laughs) I think we need to have a word because I think you're going to be up there representing Liverpool though in uh, the world I love that extreme jigsaw I'm, I'm 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 out for that I'm gonna do that <laughs> look I'm doing it without a picture that's how extreme that's I am how extreme you are I love it so what's been going on in the world of northern power women this week then uh, do you know what? It's been, been a, probably quite a positive week in some respects. We we kicked off last week with this pilot that we were doing, which was Carousel Networking. It was it was with Liverpool John Moores University, and it was for their their students. So two hundred and forty students, a whole heap of Northern Power people, uh, three rounds, technology galore glitches for fun which we know and love very well oh, yeah. uh, what I love is if you get the chance look at the Northern Power Women feed on LinkedIn and there is just it's, it's the both side it's the it's the benefit that people sort of giving up their time um, to pay it forward people being present and attending this session but the learning that you get both ways and and it is it's I'm buzzing off it plus I got about 4,500 LinkedIn um, uh, friend requests and stuff like that but brilliant and I think um, just the power of that and we forget don't we we forget that we're so connected right now in this is virtual world but just that real life conversation and one of the emails that I got was oh my goodness Vicky Jaycock uh, works at Liverpool Football Club and you know, she just said, oh, my life is just so great to be with people again. Mm, yeah. You know, and, and with strangers, so the strangers that you have in those networking conversations. So, yeah. So brilliant event. Absolutely. Thoroughly love it. Uh, you know, totally exhausted after it. But the power is what's happening now. The power is those connections and those conversations that are still happening. So, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. And equally, we've had the first of our videos through for NPW Live, uh, which Hi. goes out on. Yeah, yeah. and there was, there was one video, a lady, uh, Michelle Lawton-Jones up in the Northeast, and she had me before she even played the video. We had a briefing session last week about how everyone can get involved and whether or not it's sharing your expertise or coming out of your comfort zone. And her email just talked about coming out of her comfort zone, talking about having this invisible disability. She's got multiple chronic illnesses. And on the back of this briefing session, she went off, she set her camera up, her beautiful orange sofa in the background, and she just talked. She just talked and she wobbled and she was herself. I had to call her. I had to Google and find her phone number and I called her because I just said that's why we're doing this that's why we're doing this you know use your voice because the sentiment and the authenticity in which she speaks which is about not having somebody else worry about being in the same position you know because you look at this smiley engaged young woman and you don't know what's going on underneath exactly yeah and so so that for me was a, a you know an uplift and I felt really proud and chuffed and happy that this platform that we've created it will enable you know Michelle to share her words and her voice but also with a sense of passing it on. So remind again for people who perhaps haven't heard the call out or not sure what you want from them and when you need it explain all what you're looking for when do you need it by and what is it for? Yeah uh, www.northernpowerwomen.com forward slash iw D hyphen 2021. So it's all on the website. You don't even have to find the exact link. Just go to the website. You'll see it. So we've got a carousel networking event, carousel mentoring event. So for emerging talent and also for university students to keep that whole connectivity. Then we're doing the shout out for three minute TED style. So TED talk style videos. So whether or not you're sharing some top tips, expertise, whether or not you just got something to say all under the banner of choose, challenge or change. So what is it that you've done? 
every we've all got something we can do or pass on. Equally, big shout out for me is is it's if it's performance could be performance, you know, could be a demonstration, but it's a platform and a stage, and we, we're creating an ultimate online directory of resources and information and insight. So please get involved and you know get in touch. We want those. We need those videos in by the middle of February. So please get them in. So then on the day of the eighth of March, we will be streaming those videos but equally we'll we'll keep building that as a resource we'll keep building that so use your voice have your voice heard that's what this is all about and that's what we're about isn't it absolutely and completely that give it a go and I know sometimes people think oh well, I haven't really got anything to say or, or someone's all be better than mine and all these ridiculous voices we have in our head and we talk about that imposter syndrome virtually every week here on the Northern Power Women podcast because we all feel it and it's you know the thing that I've learned over the last few years of doing this podcast Simone is that even that woman standing on the stage in the conference with 2,000 people in the audience who you think is a complete badass and is nailing everything she's feeling the same thing so it's almost like feel the imposter syndrome and do it anyway because if we all listen to that voice no one would get anything done so we just need to to get on with it essentially so do it whatever you have to say it would be brilliant to hear from you and we know from life lessons every week as well that everybody has different experiences and sometimes the thing that is almost inconsequential to you is the thing that can be really really powerful for someone else so we'd love you to share northernpowerwomen.com is the website get on there have a click around and then get involved we'd love to hear from you talking of networking actually as you were with your your carousel networking carousel mentoring we've done the poll this week on northern power women about networking yeah, it's, it's, it's from a recent Liverpool John Moores University study from the business school. They surveyed that only 5% of students, 5% had ever attended an online session, a networking event. I'm surprised, um, you know. I know. I mean, networking wasn't something that was ever taught to me is the wrong phrase, but I was never encouraged to network. I didn't really know how to network. It had never been something that had been made obvious to me and I know that I I kind of I mean I was working in marketing and PR for the whole of my 20s never was I ever asked to go to any networking event I didn't have a mentor as you know uh, I didn't you know I'd, I just didn't ever connect with anyone else really just the woman I work for and then there was uh, when I got into radio yes there was a few sort of mixes and a few drinks but they were kind of few and far between And as a presenter, when you kind of come in and do your show and go home again, there wasn't a huge amount of networking then either. So it is, I think, sometimes you can get to your 40s and think, well, it's something I've I've never been involved with. So I'm not surprised in a way that students haven't, but it's great that, that that's changing, right? Yeah, and I'm really excited about it. So we do have another shout out is for universities. You know, we are mindful. We can't go into schools at the moment and do this in schools, but we can do it for universities. So we've got we've already got 14 universities that are signed up to get involved. It's free. It's all free. So we're creating on the, you know, on the 8th of March, that's going to be the next event. We've got some amazing businesses that are taking part as well that are offering their skills. People who've worked at Coca-Cola, people who work at the Bank of New York, United Utilities, Cooperative Bank, entrepreneurs innovators but people at all different levels you know which I think is all about the rate of relatability um but actually you know in the poll um you know the question we asked was have you ever attended online networking events and it was pretty much you know 50 uh, 54 percent no uh 40 42 percent yes and would like to sign me up with the rest you know the rest so I think I suppose we're trying to just you know like we did all do you know uh through the the three quarters of last year was keep people connected so please do, you know, we talked right at the start for your career, your life, um, your work. That's that's what we're trying to create with this. And I feel like really motivated, inspired, the, you know, from the event last week, from the, the when we hear the feedback of this, the joining the dots and the connecting. So, yeah, don't do not go. Oh, I would have, should have, could have get signed up, get involved because there's people there that want to be connected with you. Hundred, hundred percent. I love that. And when you think about how many lives have been so, so changed during the pandemic, during the last, can you believe it, nearly a year since the first lockdown, that actually now is the time when we need to connect more than ever. I mean, I was reading a very interesting article about 
the fact that lockdown has put a fire in a lot of people's belly. And we've talked about it here on this podcast a lot about the number of businesses that have emerged during the pandemic. And a lot of this was out of necessity. You know, people were furloughed, people were laid off. They found the businesses perhaps they'd set up in one way. Perhaps they used to cater events and they were like, oh, holy moly, (laughs) what do we do now? And people are resilient and people are inventive. And this is exactly what's happened because... Do you know there was the same amount between 2019 and 2020? If you look at the number of businesses that were incorporated, say January to March, pretty much the same. They were kind of the graph was about the same. Gets to April, May, and the start of June, and nothing is set up in 2020. You know, it's way, way below the 2019 levels. But then from June until December, huge numbers of businesses were started, much, much higher than 2019. So despite that nearly three-month slump in the middle, it came out that there were more than 2,000 new businesses created in 2020 than there were in 2019. That's incredible. And looking at it, you know, things like craft and food have been the top sectors. So many of them set up and run from home because that's what people could do. And you found that husband and wives who perhaps were working in different businesses, who had executive posts or working elsewhere, where in offices, they actually came together and started businesses from their home. So then they could homeschool children as well. Um, Loads of them, as I said, between husbands and wives and families, loads of them just by women, because we know that women's work within the office space has been disproportionately affected, as have those of um, uh, black and minority ethnic people as well. They've been adversely affected by the pandemic. There is a high percentage of, of entrepreneurs from those communities as well. And what's interesting, as I saw, was that a lot of people who set these businesses up didn't say, oh, well, this is it for the rest of my life now. They're saying, well, this might be it for two years, for three years, maybe for five years. And they're seeing it as a short term fix, if you like, to keep them in the world of work, to keep their skills up, to grow new skills, obviously to bring income in. But I think it shows that real spirit of of entrepreneurship within uh, well, when you're faced with adversity, which I thought was just massively encouraging. Do you know what? And there's a, I want to give a specific shout out to someone that totally, um, there's lots of people that resonate actually around the whole setting up businesses. But there's a lady called Jane Moore, who's part of uh, yeah. our uh, Northern Power in Power Circle. And she's been holed up. She's had a number of uh, visits to hospital and stays in hospital over, over COVID. She's got a young daughter, a really supportive husband. She set up three businesses wow. and I'm pretty certain she was in hospital overnight on New Year's Eve and I remember she's like yes but it's okay because I've written a business case for this and a business plan for that and it is that you know we totally you know we're devoted aren't we to the word resilience you know but she absolutely is and last week there was something else that came out she's like yeah and I'm setting up this and I'm setting up this club for small businesses to be able to access, you know, the, the Kickstarter or, but particularly around the hospitality industry, because that's, that's where as a, as a PR, uh, that's where she's, you know, had, had done a lot of her work and has a lot of experience. So, you know what, I, I absolutely think it is great. And I think it is, it's not that whole forever, you know, it yeah. could be but I'm going to do this now because actually I think it'll do good. And I think it will, you know, um, you know, actually offer value and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I think, I think it's brilliant. It's brilliant. You have to think brilliant. It's brilliant February, Samantha. (laughs) Let's trademark that quick. Uh, Right. Let's get some life lessons going in on our, in our world, please. We do these every single week. It's where you get in touch. We send you some questions. You choose which ones you'd like to answer and just share your wisdom, your career, your expertise, just that little bit of nugget of information that perhaps come from your mum or your nan or your neighbour or your children. You know, we all have these little nuggets of life that we live by. And uh, this week we're hearing from the wonderful, well, I'll let you introduce her, Simone. She's great. Uh, And you know, I have have corralled this woman for months and months (laughs) because she's a busy lady. She is absolutely busy. But I've wanted this story because I think think she's absolutely amazing. Arian Affle, she's the founder and director of Amatrine Coaching, but she was the first ever black female inspector for Merseyside police and she's amazing and some of the things that we've talked about in the podcast today about being stood on that stage and that imposter syndrome here's Irene's life lessons absolutely fantastic Irene Affle founder and director of Amatrine coaching and consultancy what's one piece of advice that's really stuck with you Uh, I would say um piece of advice that was given to me by my mum when I was growing up she said that education is the root out of poverty 
Now, I came from a very deprived background um, and financial security was really a key goal and a need for me, in fact. Um, I didn't go to university until much later in life and I did attain a master's degree. But education isn't just about academia. It's about gaining skills, perhaps a trade, using your creativity, maybe joining an apprenticeship. Life is one long learning process, but for me, education is key. What advice would you pass on to someone starting their career today? I would say set goals. Set goals and follow them through. Take action on them. So not just the goals, but the action plans that follow through on them. Um, For me, they provided real direction in my career. And I didn't really start goal setting until I was mid-career, but I really wish I'd started earlier on because they did help me to achieve goals that I never thought that I would achieve. Um, Like, for instance, becoming the first black female inspector in the history of Merseyside Police in my policing career. Never thought I would ever achieve that. And setting up and owning my own business. Again, a goal that I never thought I would achieve. But when you set goals and you set action plans that work towards the goals, you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. When have you faced imposter syndrome and what did you do about it? I face imposter syndrome on an almost daily basis. I do lots of presentations and lots of workshops with big organisations and sit on panels with esteemed people. And I always feel that imposter syndrome. But what I have to do is talk to myself. Lots of self-talk. I deserve to be here. I know my stuff. I know my business. And also to have a look back on the feedback that I've had um, from people I've worked with and from clients I've worked with, just to give me some perspective about the impact that I have on other people's lives, the positive impact that I have on people's lives. So I do have to regularly talk to myself about how well I do do and the impact I have on people and what people do um, feedback to me. Tell us about a time you have had to be resilient. I think the period in my life where I had to develop the most resilience was the time when I was studying my master's degree. I was working full time as a detective inspector um, dealing with murder investigations, which was a very, very intense role and also necessitated working evenings and nights. I had just become a new mum, a new single mum to my adopted son, who I adopted when he was two and a half years old, a huge bundle of energy. He was like the Tasmanian devil around my house, Um, a whirling dervish. Um, So yes, becoming a new mum at the same time as working full time in that very demanding role and also studying a master's degree. It was three years of absolute hell. Um, I had to learn how to look after myself in terms of self-care and looking after my mental health. And I had to become an avid expert in how to time manage. My time was managed down to the very second in order to to, to manage all those different um, demands that I had, the parenthood, the work and the study. Uh, And finally, what difference did having a mentor make to you? It made a huge difference, um, especially when you are questioning your confidence and your capabilities in a particular area or where you want to advance your career. It gives you um, a mirror to reflect really um, your worth and your skills and your abilities. And mentors can open doors for you as well. In my career, I've, I always sought to have an internal mentor who understood the business and the work environment that I was operating in. But I also look for an external mentor who could give me that objective view of me as a, as a person outside of the role and the skills and abilities that I can bring to the, the role that I'm doing from outside. So mentoring for me is key in helping to develop people, to help open doors and to help give you a a realistic view of yourself and how you see yourself, how you perform and to uncover skills and abilities that you don't see in yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much to the wonderful Irene Affle. Do you know what? Two things really stuck with me with that, Simone. Number one, I love the fact she talks about life being 
continuous education. Education doesn't finish when you leave school or college. You are continually learning. Do not think of yourself as being educated and done and dusted by the time you're 18 or 21 or whatever. I love that. Just keep learning. That is what life is about, to keep kind of grabbing new experiences. And I loved as well the goal setting. And she said it changed her career when she started to goal set. Have you ever done goal setting? Because I have never done it. And I'm thinking now, inspired by Irene, maybe I should. No, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm going to be more Irene. In fact, we'll both be more Irene. In fact, my plan was last weekend was actually to go into the office and do that. You know, when you want that time where you've got your whiteboard and you can go and do that. Sod's law, walked all the way in. It was snowing, got here, locked, you know? So so I I had a goal to do some, actually not so much goal setting, but sort of some financial planning because, you know, I, I think we're in a, yeah, we're, we're still in very challenging times. But yeah, I, I saw that. I, I loved every single one. And I'm so glad that you know, literally everything comes to he, she, they wait for this advice. But I've, this is, this, I love this this week's really enjoyed Irene's. And she needs to forget that imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah, totally. I told you that brilliant person still feeling it. We'd love to hear from you. Please do get in touch. Just send us an email podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. That's it. And we will do everything else for you it's dead dead easy thank you look before we head off into the sunset it's um super bowl very very soon of course 7th of february coming we know it's the biggest television event in the world the annual television event this year for the first time they've been a sponsor for 37 years they've advertised during the super bowl for 37 years do you know how much it costs for a 30 second slot during the super bowl on us tv a million Five and a half million dollars for 30 <gasps> seconds because a hundred million people watch it. It's just the hugest, hugest show, as I said, in the world, the annual event in the world. So um, this year, first time in 37 years, Budweiser are not going to advertise. They say that because it's uncertain times, they don't feel it's appropriate to start kind of advertising beer and partying during a time when none of us can actually party. Plenty of people's drinking beer, of course. I'm so glad dry January's over. But anyway, um, it's interesting that what they've said is Budweiser, that they're not, it's not like they haven't got the money because actually people have continued drinking alcohol through this pandemic. But they've said they plan to reallocate the money that they would have spent on the 30 second ad to support an ad council campaign promoting the coronavirus vaccine. Isn't that incredible? So they're taking that five and a half million. Instead of putting an ad for beer on the telly, they've given it to a health campaign, which I think I I love it when we see these little stories of great corporate responsibility that's going on during these times. I like that a lot. Absolutely. I think, yeah, that is. And and you could be cynical and think, well, are they going to get their advertising kind of back? You know, the story. But you know what? It doesn't matter because actually the cause and the the need for that advertising campaign right now is so important. So I'll, I'll, I'll put my cynical bone back in my body. Well, I know I hear you totally, but I also wonder how many of your average Budweiser drinkers are watching the Super Bowl compared to how many are reading the business pages. So I don't know. They might just go, oh, there's no Bud ad or not even notice there's not a Bud ad. I don't know whether they'd go, hmm, I wonder if they've reinvested. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, a nice little story, which... uh, Well, cheers. Cheers to Budweiser. Cheers, exactly. 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 Yes, as I said, thank goodness dry January is over. Happy days. Right, Simone, you head off into the sunshine. I'll head off into the sunshine. Thank you so, so much for listening to another week. The Northern Power Women podcast will be back with you next Monday, February the 8th. Oh, my goodness me. Until then, she is Simone Roche. I'm Sam Walker. And the Northern Power Women podcast is a What Goes On Media production. Oh, yeah.